Uh, can I call the meeting to order, Jared? Mm -hmm. Everybody's on? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to call to order the Common Council meeting in the City of Algoma on Monday, November 2nd, 2020. I would like the clerk to take the roll for the last time. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let the minutes reflect that this meeting is held in compliance with the open meeting law. Approval of of or changes to the order of the agenda as published. Anybody have any questions about the agenda? If not, I'll accept the motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Mitch. Second. Second by John. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Approval of the meeting minutes from October 5th and October 20th. Did you all have a chance to review them? Does anybody have any questions on those minutes? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion to approve both October 5th and October 20th. No By Lee. Second. Second by Jackie. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Public hearing. At this time, we'll have the public hearing on the 2021 City of Algoma Operating Budget and Capital Improvement Program. I'll turn it over to our treasurer, Amber Shallow. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome back. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to share a few slides here. Are they on your desktop? Yeah, they're on the desktop. So, so they can read that. Yep. Okay. Full screen. Oh, we don't want to do it yet. I. Yeah. Now I see. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just do a really quick brief overview because everybody's already seen the details. This is our budget for 21. We no published the notice in the paper on November 2nd, or sorry, on October 14th for tonight's November 2nd council meeting. We have a proposed preliminary budget for the general fund of $4,102,779.36, which is roughly a 0.89% increase over the 2020 budget. These are the amounts per fund. So 4.1 million for general fund. The library fund is 323,000. Marina's 255, rescues 266. The marina, or I'm sorry, the wastewater treatment facility fund or sewer fund is a little over $2 million, but that does include capital. Then there's the wastewater treatment facility reserves. That is a requirement of our USDA debt payments we have to put on the side. It also is equipment reserve requirements as part of our clean water fund loans. Equipment reserve fund. That is the amount we will be putting into the fund balance, 50, just shy of 59,000. And then TID, the TID districts one, two, and three. And then our capital projects for the general fund, so your streets and dock replacements, things like that, are just shy of 2.8 million. Some of that is grant money, some of it is the loan money, some of it's transfers from general fund. So the general fund revenues, where do they come from? These are all the different sources. 
the vast majority of our money comes from taxes, property taxes, accommodations taxes, and then intergovernmental revenues, which is the state shared revenues and township contracts. Those are your two primary sources of revenue. For our expenditures, this was changed slightly after the budget workshop. I was asked to split out the fire protection fees or the hydrant rental, it's called both. Um, that amounts to about 10% of the general fund budget, just that one payment. So of the fire department's $582,000 budget, 180,000 is for their operations, 402 gets paid to the utilities for the hydrant rental. One thing we talked about at the budget workshop was putting in the tax levy at the full amount. Um, we do not have all of the jurisdictions tax levies in yet, but as of today, we have received the school districts and NWTCs. Both the school district and NWTC had a little over a 4% increase to their tax levies for our residents. Uh, Amber, repeat that 4%, is yep. it F-O-U-R? Yes. So the school district was 4.5%, the NWTC was 4.21%. If we take our maximum amount, which is what's in the budget currently, it's the city's portion is about a 1.5% increase. Uh, let's stop share. Let's see if I can share. That's more than 9%. Yeah, it's overall you're going to see about a 5% increase. So if we take our max and there's roughly a 4% increase to the county's portion, then you're going to see, like if you've got a $120,000 home, you'll see about a $120 increase on your property. If you've got a $300,000 home, you'll see a $300 increase. If you've got, like one of our businesses in town, the grocery store has got about a $900,000 value, they're gonna see a $900 increase. So our, our impact to that is not a huge amount, but if we don't go with the maximum, if we go with the bare minimum we need to break even, and that, that's based on a 0% increase to our portion of the levy, it takes about $20,000 off and it's only going to save a little bit for our taxpayers, but it would be something. When you say a little bit, Amber, what are we talking about? I should have had that figured it, out, and it, I didn't. I apologize. It looks like the big increase then is NWTC and the school district so far. The school is by far the biggest. John? Um, NWTC is 4.21%, but their portion of the bill is a small portion. Uh, yep, we're out of ports. Okay. Out of port. <laughs> I am going to unplug the camera for a minute because I need to bring up a new sheet. Or at least offload it here. Okay. And I apologize. I didn't have this figured out beforehand. I should have. It's okay. I. Um, See, the, the problem you have is when they get the tax bill, they look at the bottom line. They do. They follow up. And so, of course, that's when they come in to pay their taxes that they say, look at here, my taxes went up, you know, X amount of dollars. The county, from what I listened to at their, their meeting, like, again, like last year, they're bragging they're going to have a no-increase budget. But the way it's set up, that doesn't right. work out with so, us. The city's equalized value has grown faster than the surrounding jurisdictions. So even if the county keeps a zero increase like they did last year, our residents are gonna pay a bigger portion because we have more value here. Yeah. So we have to pay more of that full levy. And that's part of the reason for the increase to the school districts. Uh, the Algoma School District did have a levy dollar increase, but our portion also increased, so it made it even bigger. Right. Okay, so roughly about 
half of that increase would that can't be right. Sixty three dollar change. I wonder what two rivers is doing. Oh, that's not what the, they increased it on. So you're looking at about twenty twenty five dollars on a hundred twenty thousand dollar home. If we add if it, we go to the max or don't do the max. Don't do the, the max. Okay. Okay. Is there more to your presentation, or did you give us all the bad news or anything? <laughs> that's the bad news. Okay. The good news is any changes we make tonight during the public hearing do not have to be republished. Now, I'll talk with Jared after the fact to see if maybe we want to republish anyway. It's about 300 bucks to do republication. Um, it might be worth it just to get the information out to the public. If we don't make any changes, then we don't have to republish at all. But at the, la at the budget workshop, we had talked about the beach cleaner. Sorry guys, I'm trying to do two things at once here and I'm not very good at that. There we go. So the beach cleaner that we discussed would be about $43,000. I reached out to Casey from the Fund for Lake Michigan and he's very interested in seeing a proposal. They have never funded a grant for something like that before, but they have talked about it in the past and if we had enough support from other or committees and groups, it's a very good possibility they would fund at least a portion of it. Um, so I would like to add into the capital fund budget $43,000 or just shy of that for the, for the beach cleaner. And on the revenue side, we would add $21,500 for a grant from Fund for Lake Michigan and or other sources. And then we would, the city would pay $21,378 out of our loan dollars that we have. So that would come out of fund balance reserves. Okay. And then, well, if, go ahead. If I might, we have a, we have a, we have, we, we just got out of a meeting that has a joker in the, uh, in the mix here regarding that uh, uh, business with Monsanto. And, and I think we need to anticipate uh, uh, those figures as well. Oh. Um, well, that wouldn't be part of the 2021 budget, though. Well, it, it could be. The it sure, it but sure you can, could be. You, you can take it out of. We would do a budget amendment at that yeah. time. I, I wouldn't make that part of your base budget. No. That would, I think, be a budget amendment. Okay. Um, and then right before I left for vacation, Matt came to me. One of their pick, pickup trucks is not doing so great. He was hoping to get it to down the road in another couple of years, but it's looking like that's not going to happen. So we talked, and we think about $89.50 a year would be enough to cover a lease payment on a new pickup truck. So what we'll do is we will purchase the truck just like we did for Parks and Rec out of the capital budget or capital fund, and then we'll transfer money back into that capital fund to basically lease the truck back until it's paid off. So we will increase the public works transfer out to the capital fund to just shy of 89.50, and we'll offset that increase to that line item by bringing the wages down a little bit about 6700 and that is due to the new hire we had originally budgeted that new hire at the top of the range and they came more at the mid of the range so there's a savings there and then we just took 250 dollars off of overtime because of that reduction which then reduces fica by about 530 reduces the retirement by just shy of 475 and then we also reduce the public works transfer out to equipment reserve and replacement by $1,000 to help cover the rest of the lease payment. So the net 
balances the zero exchange is just moving it from line item to line item within his department. What what pickup are we replacing? Well, <clears throat> we're not replacing any of them. What I needed to do though is because of that Ford truck that we have, um, to have a placeholder in there in case we need to. So that's that's what it would be for is to replace that Ford pickup. So this isn't a definite. It, it could possibly not happen. The, the problem I have with the Ford though is you can see right through the back of it. <laughs> you mean the back window? No, <laughs> the box of it. And how, how much do we use that truck? Daily. What's the frame like, Mac? Uh, Matt? That's the bothersome part about it. Um, you know, right now it's holding together, but if we do have a problem, I got a feeling that it's going to be a big problem. Uh, it could be a possibly a big expense. What year is that? Uh, that is a 2000. Is there any type of liner or any reinforcement that can be done to drag it through another year or two? There, yeah, I mean, there's always things that we can look at getting it through another year or two. You could drop a new box on it if the frame is okay. And that's the problem is where it's, the box is mounted to the frame is where I think our issues are going to come. Yeah, okay. 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 What else you got for us? So I thought you said there was good news now. Well, that is good news. We managed oh, we're to find spending funding money. for it within his budget. There's no increase to it. <laughs> I thought that was what good news. What about that transfer back because of the other situation we had where we were going to take some money out of his budget to offset another thing we are going to do? So that money went back in his budget so then. we will be putting that back, yes. Okay. Um, the, the additional amount that we had put in for the clerk position is not going to be needed now, so we will move the money back to the areas we took it, which okay. was the okay. um, cable YouTube stipend. That'll go back, which was about sixteen hundred dollars, and then the remaining five grand would go back into the various line items that Matt had graciously reduced. Okay. And the line items he had reduced were snow plowing fuel by about a thousand, uh, miscellaneous vehicle fuel was a thousand, seal coating cold mix was a thousand, street cleaning maintenance and operating supplies was a thousand, curb and gutter replacements 500, and street painting road paint was 500. So we'll put those all back into his line items. Okay. Okay. Continue or? Does anybody have any questions? Anybody in the audience to this evening for the budget public hearing have any questions? Kelly, you got anything? No. Okay. Go ahead, Amber, are you? Okay, so then all I need from the council is do you want to leave our levy at the max or do we want to drop it back? Or the other option we have is we could wait till those the, the county's portion comes in and we know what the actual amounts are. It is very possible we will need to hold a special meeting to pass the budget because your meeting in December is too late. So if we can get the numbers from the county before your finance meeting, we can hold a special council meeting right after and be done. If we can't get it by that day, then we might have to do a meeting early the next week. And it would be a pretty quick meeting. I think I think the county's meeting on the 9th of November, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we should have those numbers then before By the we finance, finance and personnel, we would just do a special council meeting right after. Okay. Let, let me just go back to you people on the council. Questions, comments. Um, you're the one that's, well, not really. Um, City Hall's the one that's going to face the music <laughs> and myself. Uh, so tell me what you want to do. You want to wait? And leave it go like this until finance and see what we get from the county and then make a determination at that time if we should go with the max or if we should cut back and if you're looking to cut back where do you want to cut back 
We, the addition we put in for the extra tax, we just transferred out to capital improvements for additional capital. So if we cut back, that's where we'll cut back. Okay. Mr. Yeah, Mayor, I think the more information that you have, the better your, your decision can, can be um, with, with respect to this. I would suggest that we do wait until we find out what the county has got uh, in store for us. Um, okay. Mitch? With, with what you have now, Amber, <clears throat> what approximately, and even a figure, but what will we have to cut to get back to a zero with what the other ones have increased? How much about would we have to cut to get back to a zero increase? And knowing that the county's probably going to be County's not going to come in at zero. It, if you want the whole tax bill to get back to a zero, right? Okay. Oh, I don't think we could do that. Couldn't? No. I don't think so. No. Not without cutting <laughs> positions and services, and oh, yeah. that that's a pretty big cut. Yeah, we, we there's no way we could do that. I I can work on getting that number for you. Well, it's not a, just in case it's, it's not, not as bad as I'm thinking. No, it's okay. not no, it's not attainable, Mitch. Don't waste your time. We'd have to start cutting. I staff. mean, we can we can very easily keep our tax <laughs> levy to a zero. Our, I shouldn't say that. Our mill rate to a zero percent increase. That's attainable. We put the budget together originally with that. It, it doesn't pay because people don't look at. They, they don't, don't divide right. them up. It's, right. No. It's whatever the whole thing. No. Is. The only time they that the comes point. into play is when they come in the office and look at the pie chart we keep on the front counter that shows how much Everybody of knew. that bill goes to each jurisdiction, don't, don't, but. Don't take the time. Giving your address yeah. up here. Okay. Amber, I, would also I, say I have a school board, um, school district um, in front of me, and I'm looking at some of the total tax levy, and I'm wondering where you're getting your information from. So you take the 2019 mill rate versus the 2020 mill rate, and that's what shows the percentage of increase, and that's how those tax bills are calculated. So that percentage on your tax bill that shows up is based on the mill rates. So the mill rate they had for 19 and 20 was 8.84, and I have the 2021 at 8.69, which is a decrease. That's based on equalized value. Your tax bill is calculated on your assessed value. And that's okay. where the problem came in last year with the county. They were- You're right, it's based on equalized value. Yep. Yeah, so then yeah. your tax bill is actually calculated on the assessed valuation right. because the, the state applies a formula to the value of the city as a whole to get equalized value so everybody's on an even playing field <laughs> because our assessments might have been done this year, but maybe Town of Lincoln's assessments were done 10 years ago. So the state applies this formula to get everybody on an equal playing field, but they do it on the whole. They don't do it by each individual house. So then and when we, you split up that tax bill, you have to split it up by the assessed value, which is on each individual house. And this past year, we've gone through a pretty significant reassessment of the properties here in Algoma. A, por a portion of them, about 25% of them, yes. A quarter of them. Yep. Right. Yeah, it's going to take them four years to get through the whole city. Two? Two more? Two more. Two total. Oh, two total. Okay, yeah. so Jamie's telling me about half of them have been done. So, but we also had added property, which means we have to carry a bigger portion of that levy than we did last year. Last year, I wanna say we probably carried about 44% of it. This year, we're carrying about 47%, something like that. It's not a huge change, but it's enough to impact our residents' tax bills. I hope I'm explaining that okay. It's a pretty complicated process, and it's taken me about five or six years to wrap my head around it completely. Any other questions or comments? Everybody okay with waiting till the finance meeting when we get all, hopefully we'll have all the rates, and then we can make a decision at that time? That's a better tough moment. Okay. okay. Anybody in the public have any comments? Hearing none. And then I would like to move on. We're going to go under the consideration of bills, claims, and conference attendance. I'll wait till Jared gets himself back in there. 
Yep. All set? Yep. Okay. Uh, everybody have a chance to review the bills and the credit card payments? Any questions on any of them? Except the motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Kevin. Second by Lee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, roll call vote. Yeah, good, yes. good catch. Yes. Neverton? Yes. Wees? Yes. Gressel? Yes. Boer? Yes. Dashlet? Yes. Mary? Yes. All yeses. Thanks, Jamie. Conference attendance looks like Chief Remaker wants to go to the WPLF conference February 7th to the 10th. What is the WPLF? conference for chief of police throughout the state of Wisconsin um, went to it last year we go we send somebody every year where is this one at um, same place um, the winter ones usually down the Dells area okay last year I sent two people this year I'm just going myself just yourself okay Scott that came through your committee right yeah okay sure all right um, any objection to that I'll take accept the motion to let chief go to that so Moved by Second. Scott. Second by me. Kevin. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. There are no other claims against the city at this time. Uh, actually, we, we do have um, a new one that's just come up. Um, <laughs> Uh, it involves the utility, and we have a claim uh, regarding some water damage. Um, I can't really get into many details because it is going to litigation, but we do have another claim. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then we will go to the minutes. And the first one on there is the finance and personnel, which was called to order on Tuesday, October 20th at 4.30 p.m. by yours truly. Um, the roll call was taken. And the council uh, was actually, I was absent. And there was, the meeting was run by Council President Lee Dashlett. There was a motion made and seconded to approve the agenda. The minute, meeting minutes were approved and second. Motion was made and seconded. Consideration of bills and conference attendance were gone over, and motion was made and seconded to approve those. There was no one in present for public comment under old business facility needs presentation from Performa. Um, Performa is the company that we're working with that is basically doing a needs assessment of our facilities uh, here in the city of Algoma. Basically, they're looking at the park and rec building, the city hall, fire station, and police station. And public works building is not involved in that at this time. There was a presentation that was made. Um, new business. There was a motion made and seconded to recommend council approve a scope of engagement with Huntington Securities. That's the financial institution we work with. Sewer bond anticipation note renewal minutes. The committee briefly discussed that. There was general obligation bond refunding. Looks like they approved a recommend council approve a municipal wide energy management policy. There was an update on the city clerk recruitment process. Uh, there was also uh, public works labor new hire. That, they approved hiring Andy Miller to fill the vacancy on the Public Works Department. There was discussion on BDOC at the Algoma Marina. As everybody is familiar with, we replaced ADOC. And now we're looking at replacing BDOC. And uh, that cost was estimated at 123000 But there might be some grant money. It's my understanding that we would be working with on that. Uh, that was the DNR Recreational Boating Facilities Grant that was gone over. Fee schedules was updated for the marina. I think we're acting on that tonight. Mm -hmm. There were no agenda items for the next meeting. The next meeting date will be Tuesday, November 17th at 4.30 at City Hall. Any questions or comments? 
Hearing none, then I'm going to move on to protection of persons and property. Scott? Yes, Mayor. The protections of person and property meeting was held on Monday, October 26th at 4 p.m. at City Hall. The meeting was held in compliance with the open meeting law. Uh, the agenda as well as the prior meeting minutes were both approved. No one was there for public comment. Uh, in the department reports, uh, Fire Chief Ackerman presented for the Algona Rescue. Their total calls to date for October is 45, and the year-to-date calls were 321. Um, news in the department, a disinfecting fogger has been purchased for the, the rescue department um, with funds from the state grant. Um, for the fire reports, Chief Ackerman um, responded, they responded to 11 calls since the last report in September, 52 runs year to date. Eric Junio has put in his resignation from the department. And for the police, uh, police department, Chief Remaker provided the report. The calls for service in September were 263, which was significantly higher than 2019. Um, total calls through the year are 1240. Um, court enforcement is ongoing and a reminder to everyone that the winter parking enforcement and restrictions begin in November and they run in April. So make sure to adhere to those. Um, moving on, request to attend seminars was something that we just went through for chief for the WPLF annual conference in February in, in the Dells. Uh, the bills were approved. Uh, old business, we had none. New business, we had none. We had a license application which was approved uh, for a uh, Jason Joyce for Fishtail L and a Mallory Rafson for Fishtail L. Um, agenda meeting uh, items for next meeting, there were none. And the next meeting will be held on November 30th at 4 o'clock uh, at City Hall. The meeting adjourned at 4.18. That's it. Any questions or comments of Scott's report? Casey? Yes. One question with the the uptick or the significant uptick from 2019 to 2020 in September calls, uh, it, it was noted. Uh, so was there is there a, a, a trend they're seeing or is it just an anomaly? Um, the fact that it was noted that it had been such an uptick. So Chief, the, uh, sorry, sorry, Mayor. The the uptick was mainly due to uh, rescue calls with the COVID issues we're seeing going on right now. Um, there has been a spike in other calls. Nothing, nothing really as far as a crime rate or crime issue. A lot of it is just given the nature of the situation we're dealing with in the COVID world, uh, we're seeing an uptick in, in just calls and service to the officers. Okay, thank typically, you. Typically, this time of year, trends tend to go down. This is unusual. It tends to be going up. Election year, people stealing political signs and COVID. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions of Scott's report? Thanks, Scott. Let's move on to Park and Rec, Mitch. Meeting was called to order October 19th at 7 p.m. Minutes. Um, well, the meeting was in compliance. Previous minutes and were approved and bills. No public comment. Supervisor's report. Um, we discussed the reopening of the community building and have to, for small groups. Robertson will have further discussions with city administrator. They will be planning some sort of a Christmas activity that will be compliant with all the rules uh, since we haven't done anything for uh, for Halloween. Parks update, uh, we got an update on the lighting project at Perry Field. Everything is pretty good except we're gonna have to adjust some of the lights for baseball, for football. They were very satisfied. Um, they also took care of the ruts that they caused, and I think they did a pretty good job. Um, let's see, three trees were scheduled to be taken down at Peterson Park by a company, but only two of them were able to be done. The other one was too dangerous for even a professional. We'll look for alternate ways to do that. Friends of Crescent, or Crescent Beach, friends gave uh, funds for new lamp post bolt covers and the labor to Matt's handyman services. Stormwater project is nearly complete. Landscapers will be there this week to plant grass and trees. 
Fee schedules, we uh, updated the fee schedules. We did a, increase a few of them, which you'll see. Uh, you can read and post or see the post. Um, next meeting is Monday, November 16th at 7 p.m. Adjourned at uh, 7.45. Questions or comments of Mitch's report? Hearing none, thanks, Mitch. And let's move on to the uh, Planning Commission. Planning Commission meeting was called to order on October 22nd at 7 p.m. by yours truly. Uh, the roll was taken and also the minutes from the prior meeting were approved from the February 27th meeting. Public hearing relating an application from rezoning by the Rasab Holdings LLC, which is better known as Ball or Auto and Truck Parts here in Algoma. They purchased some property up in the industrial park that was the request was to rezone that uh, from M3 manufacturing to C1 commercial. There was nobody attending the public hearing that spoke against that uh, request. Under old business, there was none. New business, then we took up the rezoning request after the public hearing, and that motion was made and, and seconded and carried. There was also a request from the Paul Dufek to combine uh, parcel 31201 GL4-342 and 31201 GL4-341.5 uh, and approval of the certified survey map. That uh, There was some discussion on that and a motion was made and carried. Discussion on the Algoma Industrial Park parcels and wetland uh, delineation. Uh, Nick Iwin was here and he spoke about some property that he is interested in looking at purchasing But there needs to be a study on it because it is wetlands and we council needs to decide if they want to just If he does his property, he would be responsible for the cost, but if we do the whole Industrial park then the city would be picking up the cost Next meeting date to be determined uh, meeting was adjourned at 7.31 p.m. Questions or comments? I get a comment. I guess yeah. with this Dufek thing, mm -hmm. if somebody's actually listening, they know about as much as I do. What you're talking about by the number, could we put the address of the two that are going to be? Well, yeah, it's, it's property that's located um, north of Highway K. There is no address. It's vacant okay. agriculture land. It adjoins the campground, okay, Big Lake Campground. That's the property that when we looked at developing the Bell Harbor, we had approached the campground and also Mr. Dufek about running our water mm -hmm. sewer through there. And of course they came back and said, well, we'll let you do it, but we want X amount of dollars. So we decided not to do it that way. He owns two pieces of property. One piece of property is landlocked. So he needs to combine these. He has no intention of building anything at this time uh, so it is agriculture so he could put up a garage if he wanted to but that's basically the property it's okay i don't have an address on it so property right across from the church okay um yep Head. kind of the same i don't know maybe this isn't the time but who's who determines prices on uh, lots in the industrial park and are they negotiable or are they locked in stone I have somebody that would love to build a very nice pole barn as a shop. He's looked in the industrial park. When he gets the prices for the parcels, he just, there's no way. Do, do we have prices set on that new part of the industrial park? We do not currently. What we have done is we talked to the city assessor on what he would have set the assessed value at on the land and came up with an estimated $2,500 per acre. Um, but if we had anyone who was seriously interested in it, we would have to have a discussion probably in closed session to determine what we were actually going to sell it for. And we probably would have an appraiser come in and look at it and give us a true cost. Okay, so if he's willing to make an offer, we'd listen. If, if he's seriously considering um, it, he should come to talk okay. to Jared, the administrator, and okay. that'll get the ball rolling. I'll tell him. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, then we will move on. Uh, we don't have a lot of committee reports tonight. Mm -hmm. Nobody seems to. We still got Jake. Oh, we got the library. Jake. 
Oh boy, here we go. Uh, called, uh, meeting was called to order on Monday, October 19th at 4 p.m. at City Hall. Uh, all members were present, a couple of us were uh, on Zoom. We approved the agenda, open meeting notices uh, uh, and notice statement was read. Motions were made and approved to the agenda, public input, there was none. Approval of minutes of the last meeting were made. Friends of the library report, uh, friends of the library report, as well as uh, uh, office hour, as well as open hours for the library, uh, I suspect have changed. I'd like to uh, redirect this committee report temporarily to Kathy to update us on uh, library hours. Kathy, are you available to talk? Okay, well, uh, I'll wing it, and if it's wrong, uh, 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 please forgive me. Uh, I would I would suggest that you, uh, if you're making donations to the book corner, please call the book corner before you go, just to uh, make sure that you're, uh, uh, oh, there's Kathy is connecting. Kathy, are you, are you muted yet? I'm here. Okay, I'm here. Jake. Jake wants the clarification on the new hours. He wasn't quite sure. Can you bring us up? We, as of Monday, we're back to curbside. Monday through Friday, ten to five. Tuesday and Thursday, ten to six, and Wednesday, ten to seven. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. Very good. Uh, Kathy's director's report uh, was updated on all live. We've uh, they've finished updating on all of the library programming. Um, and uh, a virtual Halloween co uh, costume contest week was held on October 26th. Halloween Adventure Walk the week of October 26th. Knitting Grab and Go for Adults began beginning on November 18th. Please call ahead. Uh, homemade Chia Pet Grab and Go kit uh, beginning on November 30th. Please call ahead to reserve your kits. We had two or three new glass barriers installed thanks to Packerland Glass. However, since they're not going to be open only for curbside pickup, please call ahead. <laughs> Treasurer's report, uh, petty cash uh, and revenues uh, were discussed and approved, approved the payment of bills, old business, a library uh, uh, plan, uh, discussions and changes. Kathy has updated us on, on uh, the library open and close. New business, uh, library closed days were discussed. Closed session, there was none. Open session, uh, there was a, we, no reason to. And agendas for next uh, meeting will be the review of the library plan and the digitization project. That's very exciting. Uh, we're going to get out of the 1950s and into the 1960s on digitizing uh, some of the archives that the library holds. Uh, some of the totals uh, for the for the month of uh, October, they've purchased 116 books. They have five new uh, uh, audio books and seven new DVDs. New and upcoming releases include The Marauder by Clive Cussler, Hidden in Plain Sight by Jeffrey Archer, A Time for Mercy by John Grissom, and The Ichabog by J.K. Rowling. That might be an exciting uh, read for the kids as they're uh, at home staring at their phones or their computers. Get them to read a book. New and upcoming DVD releases, Bill and Ted Face the Music. Uh, this is the third uh, film in the Bill and Ted series. And this date and this month in history, really only a couple, S.S. SS Edmund Fitzgerald, sank on November 10th, 1975. It has been mortalized by the Gordon Lightfoot song. The library does have some books as well as one DVD on the Edmund Fitzgerald. Again, on the 10th of November, uh, uh, with a traditional ball and cake cutting ceremony, the United States Marine Corps celebrates their birthday. On, this, on that day, November 10th in 1775, the Continental Marines were established. We have U.S. Marines True Stories, Code Talker, a novel, uh, a novel about Navajo Marines of World War II, and many, many more. And I think that's everything, Mr. Mayor. Any questions of Jake's report? 
Thanks, Jake. Did you have a question? No. Uh, okay. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. Let's move on to medical board. There's two sets of minutes there. John? Uh, the first set of minutes is from October 6th. Uh, meeting was a special meeting was called to order at 439. Uh, all members were present with the exception of Don Wagner. She was excused. Um, the, there were no approval of the minutes, so uh, we're moving off, and the agenda was approved. Uh, the issue is COVID in facility operations, which is the reason the meeting was called. Topics of discussion were varied in nature, but all were related to operational challenges during this time of COVID care. Staffing needed an estimated uh, agency nurse, nurse need. An estimated 1.5 nurses are needed to cover the temporary shorting, uh, staffing shortages due to COVID. Uh, also, payroll preparation and submission has become burdensome as a result of staffing and responsibility changes. Uh, it's a very fluid situation where you can have staff, uh, even supervising staff, um, go into quarantine or are unable to perform the duties that uh, they were hired for. We also had to deal with uh, special COVID funds. Uh, and their allowed uses were reviewed, uh, continued operations, including payroll and fringe, staffing incentives, uh, recognition of hardship and risk, testing for regular, regular staff and resident tests, um, the training for infection control, isolation, use of uh, protective equipment, uh, personal protective equipment, also equipment itself in terms of beds and lifts and technology and supportive education uh, of the staff themselves. Um, we also discussed the, our viability going forward. This relates to municipally owned facilities not qualifying for federal aid programs uh, for, for special programs. As you know, we are locked in on certain things because we are uh, part of a municipal entity. Uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in our um, workers' compensation, um, which, you know, is related to the city more than it is the uh, medical center itself. Uh, also, we're talking about uh, state and federal advocacy, talking points needed for letters of support. Also, building skills uh, for Medicare and Medicaid. We're exploring the possibilities of either a joint venture uh, with Door County or contracted billing agencies. Uh, we experienced a 12.5 electrical rate increase uh, with, uh, that was communicated from Algoma Utilities. The mayor was going to verify that uh, and in my next set of minutes, I'll, uh, there was some outcome. Uh, also, parking lot funds uh, were not cleared yet. The mayor was going to take that uh, to Amber uh, to check on the delay. Um, we adjourned at 6.08 and readjourned as a um, board on October 22nd at 4.30. Um, all members were present. Uh, in addition to the members present, we had Gene Marsh, Matt Murphy, and Carol Nell. Uh, the agenda and minutes were both approved. Uh, financial report was occupancy rate was at 64.7, uh, which I believe was the lowest it's been this year. Uh, average daily census is 26.29. Uh, patient revenues were 221,761. Operating revenues were two, 250,815. Uh, total operating expenses were 277,320. We had a net loss of 42,495. And we had capital outlays of 15,390 to Martin Security. Uh, Matt Murphy provided an explanation for the anticipated uh, electrical bill increase and how that was determined. Um, the recap identifying error in the original calculation that and it will not be a $5,000 per month increase. Um, the approval of the bills took place um, under old business, the fire alarm system, which keeps keeps uh, keeps us going. Uh, in addition to the system, related horns and strobes needed to be updated. This was not considered in the original amount authorized. Uh, the, we had authorized up to 
34,500 to accomplish the system upgrade. Uh, that is, that is, we are going ahead with that in, um, in the 2021 budget, uh, we will upgrade the strobes and horns uh, as, as part of our capital upgrade. Final budget was presented to the board. Uh, motion by Pavic to accept the 2021 budget as approved. Second by Rotary and six yes, zero no. Motion was carried. And the new business we have COVID related um, relief slash forecasting. Um, Administrator Marsh provided a, a review of all COVID related funding uh, that had been provided uh, in support of the medical center. They included for, uh, provider relief funds, COVID education and testing funds, and additional equipment funds. Uh, a plan was uh, presented to maximize all of these funds, including the list of equipment to be purchased, uh, motion by DART to authorize equipment purchases not to exceed $50,000, second by HEP, roll call vote, six yes, zero no, motion again was carried. Uh, under the question of agency nurses, uh, Administrator Marshall's provided additional information um, provided additional information on the prospect of contracting for agency augmentation of the medical center staff. Uh, an additional registered nurse on per diem would cost us $42,560 for the planned term, and an LPN would be $33,600. Excuse me. If there is COVID in the facility, then an additional $27 per hour would be added on. They haven't had to talk this much. Um, the November and December meetings, the uh, board will not meet in November. Our last meeting for the year will be at 4.30 on December 30th via Zoom. Uh, understanding bus uh, standing business, the friends of the Algoma uh, Medical Center, uh, they had no meeting. Uh, under the administrator's report, we had a census of 26 with two in the hospital. Um, they're, the way referrals and admissions are going is totally dependent on the staff that we have. So we may be declining uh, admissions uh, that are referred to us based on who we have um, in, in the staffing right now. Uh, under revenue collection, we collected $60,000 until it's home sold. Uh, One of our dietary managers is out for the rest for the month uh, for a condition requiring surgery. Uh, we could use a few more CNAs. Um, we are still we have still not received any applications for the director of nursing position. We had an infection under regulatory. We had an infection control assessment and response the ICAR survey this week. Uh, one area of concern is the need to fit test for N95 masks. We've ordered the fit testing kit. Um, everybody's going to be fit tested when that kit arrives. Um, and we, uh, let me see, we adjourned at 6.03. And again, I'll repeat the 4.30 p.m. Wednesday, December 30th, 2020, being our next and our last of the year. Uh, meetings. Any questions? None. Thanks, John. Let's move on to the last report. Utility, Lee. President, the lease call meeting of the Oklahoma Utility Commission to order at 5.30 p.m. in compliance with the open meeting law on October 20, 21st. All members present, uh, there was motion and second to adopt the agenda motion carried. There was a motion and seconded to approve the previous meeting minutes. Motion carried. Uh, old business, none. New business, Johnson reviewed the Public Service Commission approved uh, customer qualification and proper electric rate application procedure for non-residential customers. Uh, there was a motion and second to approve the payment of bills and payroll. Motion carried. And there was a motion and second in to approve the, the monthly financial reports. Motion carried. There was a uh, capital operating and maintenance budget was uh, reviewed and discussed. There was a motion made to approve the capital budget as presented and motion carried. 
Um, there was a motion and second to approve the operating budget presented. Motion carried. Manager's report. Uh, Hawk discussed a new solar system installed at Alabama High School. And office manager report reviewed that Johnson encouraged customers to visit the utility website albumautilities.com and sign up for the new account online portal. Uh, motion was made and second to adjourned at 7.02 p.m. Motion carried. Next meeting is November 18th at 5.30 p.m. Any questions or comments? Thanks, Lee. Let, uh, at this point, then, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the receipt of those committee reports that were presented this evening. So moved. Moved by John. Second. Second by Mitch. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Let's move on to old business ordinance 829. This is the second reading. Uh, certain portions of sections 4 25 4 26, 4 27, and 4 33 relating to alcohol license. Do you have any comments on that, Jamie? No, this is just the um, ordinance that would allow the clerk to issue the operator's licenses. We reviewed it last month. Are there any questions on it? Does everybody understand it? Then I'll accept the motion to approve it. So moved. Moved by Lee. Second. Second by Jackie. Roll call vote, please. Gressel? Yes. Wees? Yes. Neverden? Yes. Cabot? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Mearing? Yes. Dashlet? Yes. Four? Yes. All yes. Thank you. Resolution 1048, um, this one here is that, uh, I, I, I'm kind of looking for a brief overview of this without reading the whole thing. Jared, you want to just? Yeah. Uh, let me just switch the camera around here. Okay, uh, so we received a request from a citizen to uh, basically uh, piggyback off of a resolution that was passed by the county board to support uh, uh, certain water, so-called water bills, um, which were uh, taken up by the state uh, earlier this year, uh, basically clean water bills and, and having to do with the, um, uh, uh, the, the cold tar uh, sealant uh, as, as one of the items. Um, and uh, th this was requested that we pass this. Is, uh, this is not taking any specific action. This is just uh, us requesting that the, the state uh, assembly reconvene. Uh, I'm sorry, the state senate convene and pass these bills. They were passed by the assembly and then uh, they basically, to, to simplify it, uh, COVID happened and the state senate was never able to convene and pass them themselves, even though it had unanimous bipartisan support. So all this is doing is a resolution following suit of the county, encouraging the state senate to convene and pass these bills. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by John. Second. Second by Casey. Questions or comments on this? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. New business, approval of new operator's license applications for Jason Joyce for fishtails and Mallory Rafson for fishtails. This will be the last time we have to do this, correct? Right. So from this point on, those will be approved by the clerk, whoever that might be. So I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by Kevin. Is there a second? Second, second by Jackie. Any questions on those two applicants? not all those in favor please say aye. Aye. aye aye opposed same sign motion carried city clerk recruitment process uh, i guess i'm going to turn that over to you because i wasn't at that meeting so so uh at the october 20th finance and personnel committee uh, meeting we talked about what we were going to have the process look like for the city clerk recruitment 
Uh, part of that discussion was what the interview panel would look like, being myself, the treasurer, the mayor, and the outgoing city clerk. Uh, there was also some question as to what role, if any, the committee slash city council would play in that recruitment process. Uh, so as a follow-up to that, I've outlined kind of the two distinct possibilities here. Uh, option one was the uh, process that I outlined at the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting, which is basically you have the interview panel that I just outlined. Uh, we conduct the interviews and make an offer to the, the best candidate, which would then go to the Finance and Personnel Committee for approval. Uh, the alternative, if the committee slash council uh, wishes to uh, be involved in that process. Uh, this would basically be a second round of interviews, similar to how we would do it for a department head uh, or the administrator position. Um, my recommendation, however, is to stick with option one uh, because the clerk is not a managerial position. Uh, this is someone who directly reports to the administrator. And, you know, in my role, I have, uh, you know, I'm the one who works with them on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm the one who's responsible uh, for uh, that position. And ultimately, uh, it, it's just, it, it would be very uncommon practice for the council to be involved in that recruitment process. Uh, so that's, that's my recommendation. Okay. Comments? I had a suggestion. Um, what about in keeping with option one, um, but in kind of do a combination between the two, um, where option two sounds as though it would be like the full council. What if the president of the council were involved um, in the interviews as well? Um, you know, adding that individual then to um, option one as another um, as another panelist, basically for the interviews. changing cameras again um, so as you might recall th this this idea came up during the finance and personnel committee meeting my opinion um, my, my feeling on that is it, it doesn't it doesn't make much sense to involve only one member and not the entire council because the the question was raised you know what why is the why is the committee just more or less rubber stamping these recruitments? And so in, in listening to that and reflecting on that, it doesn't make a lot of sense for only one member of the council to, to be involved, uh, in, my, in my humble opinion. Uh, but I, I think if, if the wish is to involve someone from the council, I think that that's a logical choice. Uh, but again, I, I would just contend you know, my feeling is that it's either everyone or or nothing is is the best route to go. My thought behind it is that there at least would be representation of the council. You know, not that the entire council is involved. You know, in this in this entire process, but at least there would be some representation there on behalf of the rest of us. And if there are certain questions or concerns that we have, maybe. The president is able to address those at the time and assist in the decision making. Okay, yeah, I, I think that that makes uh, that makes sense. Um, uh, I would ask that um, the council then provide the council president with questions ahead of time that you specifically want the candidates to be asked, um, so that we know what it is exactly that the council is looking to. Uh, learn from these candidates. Jared, how much discussion would you expect at a um, finance personnel committee meeting if we're deciding uh, as to whether or not to hire this individual or not? Well, I think, frankly, we're, you know, that means we're looking bigger picture. Um, uh, to be perfectly frank, this, this is a, a process that I am not used to. Um, uh, not used to seeing, uh, particularly for a position such as the clerk. Um, I have seen processes like this for administrators and department heads, but not for uh, staff who are not supervisors or department heads themselves. Um, 
frankly, I, I don't know how much conversation would occur if the council were not involved because putting myself in your shoes, what's there to really talk about? Um, so I'm sympathetic towards that concern and why I, I, I see to the extent that the council wants a say in who is hired, why we would go this route. I, I do understand that. Now, it's, a, it's the clerk that does the training of all of the poll workers. We have a, an election at least once a year, sometimes more often than that. So um, I don't want to say that, that it's the same as, a, as one of the other managers, but there's certainly a training and uh, management aspect to that position. So I, I, I'm interested in, you know, some of those skills, soft skills that I, if we want to call them that, uh, with respect to working with volunteers, well, they're not volunteers if they get paid. So, <laughs> um, uh, so, so are, are you saying that because of that, we should treat the clerk position as a managerial position just so I'm being clear? Well, you know, I, I think you should be looking at the skills of the individual and not necessarily categorize it as, as managerial, but management of people um, is an important skill that the individual has to have. You know, not everybody can train. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a, a relationship that has to be built with the, with the county uh, for uh, the role of uh, the um, elections so not to mention the day-to-day -day, whoever comes in through the door mm -hmm. big smile or breathing fire take your pick so are you afraid those questions would not be asked i, I don't quite understand where you're coming from john well you know, i i really don't know what's going to be asked i would hope that those things would be asked I would think they would. Um, I, I guess the question is whether or not you want the council involved in in the meetings. Um, I don't know how many candidates we're going to get. Um, we could have five. We could have ten. We could have fifteen. They're going to need to be narrowed down. I think that was one of the reasons that Jared had requested that the clerk sit in on the meeting along with the treasurer who is going to be dealing with these people on a daily basis to kind of get a feel for these individuals. I guess the question that he's posing is option one or option two. Um, who better to be able to answer any question this individual might have than the current clerk? Um, I'm not in a position and at this point, Jared's probably not either, and maybe Amber is because she works on a daily basis with the clerk. But that was one of the reasons that it was very important, I think, to have the current clerk sit in on there only to answer questions, not to basically come back and recommend who that individual would be. If you look at the job description for the administrator, it's his position. We, we outlined it in there that he is basically to hire any staff that's underneath that's not considered management staff. So I, I don't know what you people want. I guess Jackie's saying you want to include the council president. So now you're including the council president, but you're saying in order to answer any questions you might have, what questions are you going to have? Are you going to give those prior to the council president? So he's asking those during the interview. I mean, I, I guess I, I don't know where you're coming from on this, people. I guess it was my idea to invo involve the council because the way we have it now, you're the only person that, that answers to the electorate. When you pick a supervisor, or not a supervisor, but this type of a position um, that's on the committee doing the interviewing. And people will say, well, why did this person get the job, you know, what qualifications, and we get the sheets, but we can't really say much, but it's like, I just think having somebody from the council that's elected other than you and has some culpability, I just think it's a good idea. I, I said, but you weren't here at the meeting, and I, this is, I'm going on my sixth year, finishing my sixth year, 
we have never done a hire here that I had a choice. It, it's either here's our candidate and that was it. I mean, well, there were times we were invited to interviews. Sometimes on Saturdays I couldn't make it. But it's like we hire people and we make decisions based on a committee's recommendation. And we don't know a thing about anybody else that was there. We're relying totally on the committee to recommend somebody, and we don't have any other choices. But don't you think that's why we have committees? I mean, if, you're gonna, if the council wants to be involved in every hiring, and I think the council was involved in the hiring of the police chief, if I'm not mistaken, um, we did have some outside chiefs come to do the questioning, which because we were looking for experts, but if the council's going to want to start being involved in all the hiring, you recently just hired a person for public works and you were not involved in it. Do right. you feel, Mitch, that you want to be involved in everything? I'm not if that's saying everybody if you want has to. to. I don't but who did we pick and choose to be the one to be involved from the council that's going to have be able to answer the questions that you're as a council member are going to want to know? I, I'm, it, I'm game for anything. If we did it on a rotating basis or, or who have people say, I'm interested, and if you get three, you pick one. Um, I don't agree totally with, with uh, that it has to be the whole council or none. I don't, I don't understand that. When the police chief, you had Lee, I think, was on the committee because he was the chairman of the committee. There is no. No, no it was Scott. Or Scott. Scott. There is no committee in this case. I'm guessing that when the last street department worker was on, were you on that? Yes. You know, if it's associated with the committee, that person that's the chairman, if we hire somebody for the park, I'd be glad to be on. Well, you do. You know, hopefully we don't have to hire anybody. No, for, uh, but but for management, but I mean for park employees, your your committee recommends. And then I would say if it's a position in City Hall where there is no committee, then it should go to the council president. If he doesn't want to, he can appoint somebody that he would like to, if they're willing. You know, I just think that we're elected to do some of this stuff, and you know, we, we yeah, we were like a rubber stamp for everybody basically we've hired, because I've only known one person when Matt got hired, when the chief got hired. You know, we brought one person was brought to us. Right. We have no idea who else applied. Kelly, or, did you have a wait? Kel, did you ahead. have a comment? I just have a comment. Um, the last public work employee that was just hired, the committee had virtually no knowledge of it. I've been on the public works committee for over 20 years. It's the first person, including employees or manage the management, that. I didn't even know who the candidates were. I wasn't involved in, nobody, other than Lee, I think, no one was involved from the committee in the process of interviewing. So I'm gonna just beg to differ what you just said, that the committees are doing the recommending. It didn't happen just a few weeks ago. I didn't mean the committee, like your park, or your uh, street department committee. I meant the committee of the people, you know, the, the mayor, Jared, you know, the, not the street department committee it's it's the committee that was chosen and i think maybe one i i know when when we did the chief uh what's his name who's on the uh, ppp john or wasn't he on there well he sat in i mean anybody they all council sat in if you were unable to make it i don't know it was a saturday i think it was yeah it was a saturday i couldn't but um, so, okay, well, that's fine. Um, so what do you want to do on this particular case? Let's, let's not beat this to death. Do you want the whole council? Do you want the council president? Anybody else have any comments at home? Casey? So I, I, I think that we, we, we hire a position like Jared and we empower him with the duties that, that are required. And that includes, to his point, uh, deciding downstream candidates and I mean, arguably, you, you could say of, of any any situation in the city that we technically should be involved with because we represent or we are elected representation of the people. But that's why we, we empower employees and we empower 
uh, managers to carry out those things because it would be infeasible to be in everything. Um, yeah, I, I guess if, if we have input, I, I suppose that's something that I, I would imagine Jared would be welcome to uh, receive, but I don't know if it's, it's, it's necessary to have somebody on there. And, and, and it seems redundant for one, and it, it seems like it, it might make the process more convoluted uh, than it needs to be. Okay. My, my, my experience, uh, if I might, is that uh, I would I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Jared's uh, take and with uh, Casey's statement that uh, we have hired Jared to ask the correct questions. We have hired Jared to know how to handle the legal minefield that is constituted around a, a human resources hire and what questions we can ask and can't ask uh, that uh, uh, could, uh, could potentially be uh, significant uh, uh, legal liability to the city. And if the council as a whole would like to submit questions that they feel need to be asked through Jared as our human resource manager and administrator, I'm all for that but I really don't think that we need to clutter up the discussion by just adding bodies uh, to a process that should be rather compact and relatively streamlined. And I never wanted it to be where every councilman was involved, but I just think that in a hiring process, there should be one. Okay. And I never meant it for be all eight of us. I mean, I really think we should change the name of the finance and personnel to this finance committee because we really have nothing to do with the personnel in that in that meeting unless something happens i mean but uh, but i never wanted all eight of us to be you'd get you'd be here all night like we are tonight so but so I, i'm okay if it goes if it stays and it's the committee you recommend you know i'm not happy with option one I, I believe I still have the ability to, to submit questions to Jared um, that I would like to have addressed. Anybody else have any comments? Scott? I'll, I'll reiterate what I said at our finance personnel meeting that, um, you know, it kind of coincides with what Casey and Jake had said. Uh, we, we hired our I, I have full faith in the staff the staff level we hired jared to do this job um at the end of the day it's um uh, that is that is one of his duties um if if and when um he or any other member of the the, the committee or the council would reach out to me for advice or counsel um during the process i'd be more than happy to give it but i'm not here to micromanage i would hope that uh um that is known and and if if it is needed that uh, the help would be accepted um i don't at, at the end of the day like i said uh you know last week or two weeks ago when we had our meeting um it, the the decision is going to be ours as a body um, they're going to bring us the best best candidate they're going to do all the vetting and if and when we we sit down and uh, we meet this person or we are presented with the option uh if if we don't fully think that um you know, if we aren't in full agreement or don't have full confidence in the decision that they made, I mean, we do have the right to say yay or nay. So I'm, I'm in favor of option one. I, I, I trust you. I trust the uh, staff level to, to do their job. That's it. Okay. Anybody else have any other comments? We're okay with option one. Anybody going to object to option one? Okay. Yes, Jared. I just wanted to, um, in in light of uh, Alderman Pabick's comment, I I'm more than happy to receive questions if there are specific questions that any member of the council wants answered during the interview. Uh, I'd be more than happy to take those. I just ask that you get them to me by the end of next week, uh, so that we can, because I have to go through and then vet all the questions and make sure that. You know that they're all all uh, legal and they all flow well and, and as part of the process so um, if there are specific things the council is looking for that wants answered I'm more than happy to incorporate that into the interview 
Okay. okay. Moving on to Ordinance 830, amending Zoning Ordinance 783, parcel number 31201, 1508 Sunset Avenue. That's the first reading. Jared, you want to expound on that? So just give me a second here. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, from the, oh, sorry, I'm gonna change the camera again. So this is the uh, rezoning request that was mentioned uh, during the, the plan commission meeting minutes. Uh, the property down in the industrial park is currently zoned M3. Uh, this is for the, um, the auto parts store. They are, in order to operate their business, are uh, they need to have it rezoned to C1, and there was unanimous uh, um, approval to recommend, or I'm sorry, unanimous to recommend approval, and, and staff agrees uh, that it is a consistent, uh, is a logical rezoning and is consistent with our comprehensive plan. Um, and so with that, I'll answer any questions. Okay. This is the first reading, so you'll all have a chance to go through it. Uh, any questions at this time? I'm sure you all read it. Hearing none, then we're going to move on. We'll, we'll address it at the next meeting. This is Ordinance 831, amending Article 3 of the City of Algoma Code Ordinance relating to use of snowmobiles and all-terrain vehicles in the City of Algoma. This is also the first reading. This has come before the Protection of Property and Persons. There was a request by some individuals, correct, Chief? that we look at uh, creating ATV trails that or access trails in the city of Algoma. Did anybody have any questions of this at this time? No? It's again, it's the first reading, so we'll take action at next month. Then we'll move on to the next one. That's um, resolution 1041. That's authorizing the scope of engagement letter with Huntington Securities. That's Jeff Belongi, correct? Mm -hmm. And he's just, the name changed. Mm -hmm. And so we're, all we're doing is just approving. Every this, time we start working on a debt issuance, we'll do another scope of engagement letter. That's just some of the rules they have to adhere to okay. under the federal guidelines. So I'd entertain a motion to approve that resolution. Almost. Jeff, back in. Lee moved, Lee moved, who seconded it? I did. Kevin seconded. Okay, any questions or comments? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution 1042, authorizing the issuance of $926,693.58 sewer bond anticipation note with the Bank of Luxembourg. Amber? So... The city currently has a bond anticipation note sitting at the Bank of Luxembourg for the sewer department. That note comes due mid-November. I want to say it's like the 9th or the 21st, somewhere in there. Um, we either have to pay the note off in full, which is a little over a million dollars, or we can refinance it into another bond anticipation note for an additional four years, because that's the maximum we can go up to. And the way I've set it up with the Bank of Luxembourg is we can pay this note off at any time. Once the sewer fund has met the reserve requirements, they have to have enough net income for the year to pay the debt payments at 125%. And then we can go to bond market. If you don't have that requirement met, you can't go to the bond market with these notes. So that's why we're doing these bond anticipation notes. We're at roughly 120% for 2020. Okay. So that it basically resolution 1042, 1043, and 1044 are basically all the same for the same reason? No. Okay. 43 and 44 are two, is a different issue. Okay. So right now on 1040, uh, 42, any questions of Amber? Otherwise, I'll accept the motion. Moved by John. Second. Second by Mitch. Questions or comments? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right, we'll go on to resolution 1043, authorizing the issuance of 930,000 grow refunding note with the Bank of Luxembourg, Amber. 
So this is currently a debt issuance that the city has that was originally set out in, oh goodness, I want to say 2009. It is at the bond market. So we actually went out to the bond market and sold these bonds. The interest rates for the upcoming next nine years that are left on the bonds range from 4.4% all the way up to 4.75%. The Bank of Luxembourg, the bond is now callable, which means we can refinance it, or in municipal terms, it's we call refunding. The Bank of Luxembourg is willing to give us a loan for eight years, so a year shorter, at 2.5% interest, which by doing that will save us approximately $79,000 in interest payments that we would pay if we left it at the bond market. So it really does make sense to go through the bank and issue a bank note for the remaining eight year, for eight years, one year shorter, pay it off a little bit sooner and a lot less interest. Okay. Motion? So moved. Moved by Lee. Second by John. Questions or comments? Not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Pull same sign. Motion carried. Resolution 1044, authorizing the call of 1123 2009 1595000 gold refunding bond. Amber? That's the original issuance of this bond in the bond market. It was issued in 2009. The original amount was issued at one point, almost $6 million. What's left is the 930000 So now that you've authorized us to go ahead and get a note from the bank to pay it off, we have to call that bond from the bond market. And so that's what this is doing, is authorizing Quarles and Brady to issue that call notice so we can pay off the bond market and then issue the note. Okay. Motion? So moved. Moved by Mitch. Second by Kevin. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Polls, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution 1045, that's amending the City of Algoma fee schedule for fees at the Algoma Marina. You should all have a copy of this. I'm taking it that the proposed fees are the ones in red that you're changing or you're proposing to change? That is correct, Mayor. Okay, thank you. That's the season pass. Resident season pass is going up $5. Uh, Non-resident season pass is going up $5. Uh, water, electricity, Outs included for seasonal is going up five dollars. The trans transient daily fee is going up to two dollars from a dollar sixty-five, and transient monthly is going up from eighteen to twenty dollars. Question, motion. Moved. Moved by John. Jake. Jake. Excuse me. Moved by Jake. I'll second. Second by John. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution 1046, implementing a municipal-wide energy m management policy. It's my understanding that this is something we've done every year. Matt? Um, no, we started this when we started doing the LED change out. Okay. Um, so... And we're about probably eight months ago, 10 months ago. About was that. it the last one I believe we did? Or it was longer than that because it's expired in 12 months, so a year ago. Oh. Okay. Motion. So moved. moved by John. Second. Second by Jackie. Any questions or comments? Not all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Last one resolution 1047 authorizing the purchase of materials for construction of a new B dot for the Algoma Marina. Matt and Amber, whoever. This, this would be to replace the, the uh, current B dock. Um, very similar to how we did a doc um, B doc will come out of the water we will order the pieces our guys my guys at the shop will build out B doc throughout the winter and um, 
put have this ready to put into place um, in spring. With the caveat of this total price of one hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars, is still doing some legwork on finding out some grant funding that we're still trying to put some answers together on some transient issues and how we can maximize the funding of a possible grant to use towards this. If we don't get the grant, the replacement of BDOC is still going forward? That would be correct at $123,000. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. It's not dependent on the grant. It is correct. Okay. So, Matt, this is, this is John. So you can get a pretty good feel for before and after by looking at the, what we've got in the harbor right now, right? Where you've got the A dock pushed up against one side and B dock is still there. And it's going to make a big difference in how the har harbor looks, that's for sure. Yeah, so it, it, what John is, is referring to is, ADOC was pushed all the way to the north end of the marina. Now, if you're down there, about two thirds to three quarters of ADOC has now been removed out of the water. We will finish that removal uh, tomorrow and then start the removal of BDOC uh, to come out of the water to get ready for both of them to go back in in spring. It was a comparison between the two, is that was what I was referring to. That is correct. I apologize. Yes, John. So, ADOC was all brand new for the 2020 season. We would put in BDOC to be brand new to start the tw A and B, then would be one year old and brand new to start the 21 Marina season. Is that new pedestals doing it? The pedestals on BDOC are, are already completed. Okay. They all have. Um, uh, DUCs are all, all have been replaced on BDOC, so we would have new wiring being ran, but the pedestals are all ground fault protected already. Okay. Cool. Okay, motion. So moved. Oh, yeah. motion. <laughs> moved by Lee, second by, was it John? Yeah. I'll second. Questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Well, that's it for new business. Then we're going to move on to the administrator's report. Jared? Yeah, thank you. I'm just moving the camera again. You're going to hire somebody. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, as outlined here, clerk position, we have posted the position uh, following our Finance Personnel Committee meeting last month. Uh, we are accepting applications through Wednesday the 18th. Uh, facility needs study update. We had the presentation as well at that Finance and Personnel Committee um, meeting, uh, kind of giving us an update on where that was at and the conceptual uh, uh, outlook there for our, our facility needs. Um, you know, we weren't looking for direction at the time. We, we still are not. Um, given the, well, let's just call it what it is, the considerably high price tag associated with those projects, um, I've asked to meet with our financial advisor to go over and see if there's any uh, any feasible way to even make it happen, if it's worth even considering moving on to the next steps, or if it's so far beyond what we can do that we need to basically just uh, shelve it for now. So I will be providing an update uh, to the council or the finance personnel committee meeting following that meeting with uh, our financial advisor. Uh, COVID-19, um, as we all know, it has not been exactly a banner month the past few weeks with uh, Northeast Wisconsin with COVID. Uh, it seems like every day we're setting some kind of new record. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, effective today with the exception of tomorrow because it's election day, uh, City Hall is once again going to be closed to the public, uh, only open by appointment. Uh, and when I say appointment, it's nice if you can call ahead and set up a time, but really what we just mean is call us and we will come and get you uh, if you come to City Hall. Uh, that allows us to interact with one member of the public at a time and allows to properly sanitize any common surfaces just out of an abundance of caution uh, for both the public and the staff. Um, Unlike when we did this earlier in spring, we when back you know back in April we were limiting it to just early voting and dog licensing here. There's really no point in limiting what type of business, so everyone will still be able to do all the same things, just one family at a time. 
Um, the Rust Recovery Grant allocation, we've expended all but about $1,300 of that, and there's still a little bit that we're putting in uh, for that. We have until the end of this week to spend those monies. Um, so far, we've used that to purchase uh, PPE for staff and the public uh, to use in our offices and, and facilities, uh, cleaning and sanitization materials. Um, and I can turn over to Tom. He can explain this a little bit better. But uh, one of the, the bigger things we purchased for the fire department were these, um, I don't know, Tom, what, what would you call them? They're like foggers almost, right? Or, or what exactly are they? Yeah, they're units that we use to sanitize our apparatus and actually the station as, as well. Um, and they're fogging units, puts a light mist on the surfaces, and uh, it's a matter of letting it that mist sit on the surface for a couple of minutes and sanitize. So there's a lot of other agencies out and about in the northeast Wisconsin area that are using them and uh, having good success with them. Thank you. Uh, we've also purchased uh, new tough books for the, uh, the for the police department uh, because you know we, we need to make sure that everyone has access to their own laptop and it's not a shared surface in order to avoid uh, contamination there. Um, we've also purchased laptops for uh, certain city staff or just for for use uh, in the need that someone needs to work remotely um, or to help facilitate uh, Zoom use of zoom for meetings uh, and then we've also as several of you who have come through here have noticed uh, we've renovated the old police department office space here on the first floor of city hall uh, with the idea being we're going to be moving uh, the clerk and the treasurer position down to that end of the hallway to physically separate them uh, to provide uh, a more a safer uh, environment um, you know because obviously right now there's a shared workspace there about 10 or 15 feet apart, but at the end of the day, they're still sharing a workspace. So um, we're able to use these monies to renovate the old PD workspace and, and better distance them uh, with that. So, um, and then the last item on here is the stormwater outfall project. Uh, it's just about complete and we're actually gonna be ahead of schedule on that. Um, I'll turn over to Matt to provide a few kind of last minute details. Yeah, so the stormwater outfall project is probably 95% complete. Um, there's a couple punch list items. Uh, me and the engineer, uh, Ryan Trzinski from Robert E. Lee, our engineer did a walkthrough on Friday. Um, there's a few odds and ends that need to be touched up. Um, the parking lot stripes have to go in. It sounds like they will be out here Monday to perform that task. Um, it could be possibly later this week, but at the latest Monday. Um, and then push to get our final bills um, from everybody so we can get our submittals um, to Amber so Amber can get those over for grant purposes. By the November 30th, I think That's is correct, problem. Amber, we need 100% uh, of our submittals um, taken care of for that. Um, but it should be, for the most part, wrapped up. Okay. Does anybody have any questions of the administrator's report? plans for poll watchers or accommodating them I'll, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna end with turning it over to Jamie for talk about the election and everything so uh, I got she's got a whole about an hour and a half report that she would like to give <laughs> this evening since it's her last day so I'll uh, I'm gonna turn it over to her and everybody knows that Jamie Jackson is gonna be leaving the city of Alvoma. She has taken another position further south. Um, Jamie will be missed. I can tell you that I've talked to a lot of people in the community that tell me we're losing a good person. I don't think there's anybody in this room or anybody that's watching this televised uh, council meeting that's gonna disagree with us. I wanna thank her personally for everything she's done. Uh, not only for the city, but what she's done for me. She's made my job a lot easier. I think we had a good team with her, Amber, and Jared. I hate to see the team being broken up, and I hope we have as much success finding somebody to replace her. But I told her this evening I would end with letting her talk about the election. So she has a lot of notes, but the floor is yours. Okay, so to address John's question, um, we do always have a space set up for observers. I have never experienced one coming in and watching 
Um, but if we do have one, I think tomorrow is going to be the day. We have been notified by the Kiwani County Star News to probably expect somebody. They've notified all three uh, cities and the village of Luxembourg um, in the county that they plan on stopping at too. So I'm guessing that we're going to get hit with one of those either at the beginning or the end of the day. Um, I don't anticipate any issues there as well either, but um, we'll be ready for them if they show up. Otherwise, uh, my report that I had prepared um, was that we have 1,840 registered voters in the city of Algoma. We have issued 1,084 ballots already to in-person absentees and mail-out ballots. There's 51 of those still outstanding. So 56% of our registered voters have already cast their ballot. Um, any of those outstanding ballots can still be returned until 8 o'clock tomorrow night. For anybody that is still coming to vote in person tomorrow, I am expecting that this is not going to look like a normal presidential election. We're not going to be as busy as we would have expected had this been a normal year. Um, we're asking that voters wear a mask. If they don't want to, we can't tell them that they can't vote, but we're still encouraging it. Um, they will be required to um, sanitize their hands when they come into the polling place. We have clean pens available at the hand sanitizing station. They are to pick up one of those pens, carry it through the polling place. They're gonna use that pen to um, sign the poll book, use it on their ballot, and then take it home with them. We don't wanna be having a bucket of pens to clean at the end of the day, so just take them home. Um, all of our poll workers will be wearing masks similar to the August election. There's also going to be plexiglass plexiglass barriers between poll workers and the voters. Our poll workers will also kind of be around the edges of the room versus having a ballot table in the middle of the room. Um, also, we've had a lot of questions from people that didn't get into early vote that maybe now are sick. Um, if you have symptoms or you have COVID, you can still vote. Um, please don't come into the building, but there are phone numbers posted on the front and back entrances of City Hall. If you call one of those numbers, somebody will come out and help you vote from your car. We'll send out two poll workers. It's going to take a little bit of time to get things gathered, but you can vote from your car, and then the poll workers will come in and feed your ballot through the tabulator. That's kind of the gist of it, if, unless anybody has any questions. Anybody have any questions of Jamie and the election tomorrow? <coughs> Sounds good, thank you. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Nope. You're all set? I'm good, thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, at this point, uh, I have no appointments, so yes. <laughs> thank you very much. I have no uh, appointments or other comments, but I would entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851C concerning employment, promotion, compensation, or performance valuation data of any employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercise responsibility, review of personnel and managerial, managerial position. So moved. Moved by Mitch. Second. Second by Lee. Roll call vote. Russell? Yes. Lees? Yes. Maverden? Yes. Havoc? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Maring? Yes. Dashlet? Yes. Four? Yes. All yeses. Okay. Right. Leave coming, shut the doors. Hi. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not running down there. <laughs>